Hello, 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 welcome guys to the weekly mentoring video. It's Adam speaking Option Mindful. It's Monday, 26th of April 2021, and I'm broadcasting from Quito. So, we're starting with the next video session for the weekly mentoring video on our 100k portfolio. It's actually reached now the point of being 150k portfolio. So, we've been doing actually quite a nice job since one year. Basically, trading this account uh, resulted in 50% return on investment till now. Um, and it's going up. Of course, I must say also that markets have been uh, very good to us in our trades. There were some couple corrections which we had to handle and some times where things didn't go the way we wanted them to go, but we managed the portfolio, we managed the risk. And that was the point of learning all this and actually making making the money. All right. So today's program is going to be a little bit special, more special. I'm not going to be going through all the items on the portfolio. It's quite big and it's still going to be divided into two parts. Uh, before we get there, I will mention the disclaimer. That's very important here to say that this video is for informational education purposes only. So I'm not trying to give you any advice or I'm not giving you any trading advice. I'm just educating you how to trade, how to trade options. And you can just learn by watching what I'm doing and making, taking your own you know, lessons out of that, making your own conclusions about it. And uh, so please, if you agree, well, let's continue. Uh, this video will be divided, divided to two parts. Part one it will be for YouTubers, uh, guys who join my YouTube channel, optionmindful.com or Option Mindful YouTube channel. And here I will focus, I will show you, you know, there will be a common part which we will discuss about the markets and so on. But I will show you something what I do with Exxon Mobile Trade. So making money basically with oil, uh, why and how to get it cheap, why to get it and how to get it cheap. So they will discuss this with everybody. And then part two is for my students, for people who joined OptionMindful.com Academy, uh, subscribe to the channel there and uh, to these videos on a monthly basis I will teach you additional ways of making money so we'll be making money with our portfolio we'll describe what's going on with the portfolio and how it's performing and why it's performing like that and also we'll talk about making money with poor men's long call spread which i have on merck and walmart one of them works good the other one looks like it's a little bit underwater so we'll discuss both scenarios and and basically how this poor man's long call spread can actually uh, be used to fix the Walmart trade or you don't necessarily need to exit it, uh, especially when we look at the price chart. Uh, but, you know, I will describe some ways of uh, getting out of uh, being underwater with trades which didn't work the way we wanted. OK, so having said that, I will start with the video and move on to the browser first. So I will just uh, start the beginning with the briefing.com analysis of the market. Well, the markets have been doing quite good. Uh, as you can see, they're all green now. So Dow in NASDAQ, S&P 500 still green, reaching all time highs, going up, 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 up. Nothing seems to be stopping them. And today, you know, briefing.com somehow they stopped writing stories uh, around this, you know, updates here. They used to have like longer stories, this kind of type of much longer stories. Now in the morning when I start briefing.com, I see they just tell me what's strong, financials, industrials, energy, minerals these days. And what's weak, uh, healthcare, utilities and consumer staples will keep that in our mind. What's moving the market? Tight range session ahead of busy week of events. There will be some event that actually suggests something, you know, busy week of events. There is going to be something in our economic calendar and probably not only. Mixed sector performances, they tell me that, you know, markets kind of move sideways. We can verify this by looking at the charts. So if I go to um, trading view and I look at the S&P 500 futures, uh, I didn't want, I didn't intend to move that. You can see, you know, that market has been having this beautiful bull run here, very long, uh, crazy overextended bull run. And now it's kind of moving sideways. To me, this is a classic, you know, flag pattern. Okay, it's kind of flagging, waiting to break out and go even higher. You know, of course, I don't know that, but technically, this is what I see. I also see that uh, it's in this channel, and you know, I would not be surprised if the market goes for a longer period of time. That means till May, somewhere there, kind of sideways, and then breaks out and goes up again. Why am I so bullish? Why am I thinking that it's not going to collapse anytime soon? 
Well, because I'm thinking that the Fed and whatever the policies that governments have around the world right now, uh, monetary and fiscal policies, uh, well, they don't lead to a situation where these governments or central banks will allow their assets to completely fail and markets to fall. They stand there and they actually promise, you know, to the investors, to everybody, officially speaking about it, that, uh, you know, whatever happens with there, we're going to be supporting this, uh, uh, you know, economy and the stock market with all weapons we have, with all, you know, uh, tools that we have. And the main, main primary tool which they have is actually printing press, uh, which they don't really need the printing press these days. They can just put a digit in the computer, you know, just type in a couple zeros with one in front or nine or whatever. And then that's the currency that we have. And they're talking about even more QE programs, even more money creation. I mean, money it shouldn't be called money currency, fake fiat money creation in order there to boost this market of course everything comes with, like, like this comes with consequences and the primary consequence of this is related to uh, inflation inflation of course makes sense when uh, governments go there and just create a lot of digits out of nowhere well then there is more digits around the world to be used and everything what has a value is measured in new, new version of the digits that have been created now we have more of those then the value naturally of the items, you know, which have value, commodities, you know, uh, sugar, you know, stuff like this, corn, metals, you know, lumber, all of that will go up because it's measured in new dollar, newly created digits. And people talk that there is no inflation. The CPI says that it's like one or two percent inflation levels, but Obviously, when we look at the, if we just go to the store and restaurants and, you know, check what are the prices, how much are we being charged for the same products that we've been buying one year ago, you know, is this really 1% more or the thing, the prices changed and they change dramatically. People report changes of 40% around this number, you know, for the items that they bought. So the numbers that are published on the official website can no longer be trusted. Uh, and also you know if we introduce inflation uh, of course also the markets the prices on the market the you know S&P 500 the shares can naturally go up because they again also measured in these new dollars so that's what I wanted to mention I don't see this market collapsing anytime soon people talk about it that it may correct and it may correct significantly and I'm prepared for that because obviously something in this world may happen you know like we can have another pandemic or something some event which causes a massive collapse of uh, all this stuff uh, you know but it's not very likely actually with uh, if, if uh, central banks continue on their policies for a longer period of time I can just see an up movement for the rest of the year <laughs> I don't see maybe there will be a big correction somewhere in the end when they cannot do that anymore people people figure something out I don't know uh, but uh, until then I see that just thing just moving up and up and up uh, just because of that uh, additional currency money printing and so on uh, well there is lots of resources about this topic which you can check out on the internet uh, I'm just giving you my perspective on this uh, I don't see it coming down anytime soon but uh, there is different opinions and people talk about collapse of the dollar collapse of you know, um, you know rise on the uh, side of the digital currencies causing the dollar to and, and also economies dumping the dollar you know around the world as it's re now reserve currency uh, but countries like russia or china they don't want to use the dollar anymore so you know there is a lot of stuff going on in the economy and the, this market is definitely crazy uh hard to it's it, to me it's a little bit like a casino hard to say where what may happen in the future i don't have a crystal ball but from what i see technically and from what i hear and read i don't see it coming down anytime soon yeah uh, but obviously it may happen and you need to be prepared for that and we are preparing our portfolio for something like this okay having said that i'm going to go also to vix uh, to see the volatility index okay and you can see that it's very very low it's sitting at 18s so it's below 20 uh, you know it, it reached this low levels here 16 some time ago a couple days ago week ago and now it's back to 18s uh, but still relatively low to compared to where it was for the entire year 
Uh, so it seems like there is not so much fear on the market. Everybody feels very sure and secure about it. Uh, looks crazy to me, okay? Because this market is uh, capable of doing things like that, you know? Explosions, you know? And uh, of volatility within a very short period of time, you will see some news and market panic because you are still in the situation of this global pandemic going on. Uh, you know, some currency printing, people filing for unemployment every week. There is like 500,000 cl new claims in the US. Uh, you know, people applying for unemployment for the first time. How can this be, you know, that we don't have any fear with the market? Well, Fed. Yeah, uh, also, yeah, how can this be that the market just keeps going up and up and up and the company is performing so well while, you know, people apply for unemployment every week? So many of them. So lots of question marks just to repeat that. But uh, technically looking at this, it looks bullish. Loss, less, lot, not too much fear, very bullish. We need to be prepared for something, but let's benefit from that movement, okay? Uh, when we look at the economic calendar, so what is the news, anticipation of the new news coming in? So busy week events, what are the events? In the economic calendar, what we see is FOMC statement, federal funds rate and press conference from, uh, F uh, F from Federal Reserve. That's gonna happen on Wednesday. That's kind of important event. Uh, they will not raise rates. They cannot afford that. They can maybe lower them. That's all they can do now. Uh, raising rates will exactly lead to the collapse of the market. You know uh, what these guys, because you know the companies are now uh, you know highly leveraged. You know also taking a lot of loans and so on. And these loans are cheap now. If you raise rates, okay, then uh, you know these companies may be in trouble. You know paying that stuff off. Uh, okay, GDP numbers uh, will be published on Thursday. So watch Wednesday and Thursday to see what's going to be happening uh, with the markets. Probably there will be some sort of a move, maybe a little correction, who knows, or just things just jump up again. I'm not sure. Yeah, but these days will be definitely moving the market. Uh, Finviz, if we look at the day to day, you can see a little bit more details down NASDAQ S&P 500. How they move, you see Nasdaq is going relatively uh, steadily up today, while Dow is going down, you know, a bearish move, a sideways kind of move on S&P 500. So you see this mixed uh, map here, uh, communication technology kind of mixed, financial sector, like also like really the big banks are doing really good, healthcare not great, consumer uh, defensive really bad, Walmart, we are in that stock, so we have to check that out. Uh, utility is pretty bad, energy good, Exxon Mobile, we're going to talk about Exxon today a little bit. Uh, what else? Uh, if we look at natural gas, gold, Dow, S&P 500, everything is green. Natural gas had very nice run and move today also. Uh, gold stands still, yeah, which is very strange why we have, you know, all this currency printing going on. It's in natural hedge against inflation and nothing moves it, right? So, but we all know, like all the guys who know me, who listen to my videos, you know that, uh, you know, uh, gold market is highly manipulated as well as silver market. I'm also part of this. I'm, I'm following the uh, silver squeeze movement. These guys are very, have access to very nice information, very good information. I really recommend that to do, for you to do that too. Uh, you can steal the list of the guys that I follow from my Twitter account, if you like. Uh, and what else? Uh, another one little recommendation before we go to uh, to the portfolio is about reading some news on Seeking Alpha. I like to look at their market outlook or today's market and you can basically uh, find the really cool information uh, uh, that is you know good for the beginning of the week. If you read, you may quickly find out what's going on and so on. So just to recommend, uh, um, nobody's paying me for this, by the way. It's just like I, I, I discovered Seeking Alpha a long time ago, but I never looked at their uh, market news and so on. And I find them pretty, pretty interesting. And often they have good uh, content here. So uh, just showing you what I'm doing. OK, so now let's switch to the portfolio where we're going to stay for a while. OK, and uh, just an overview for everybody. So uh, how are we performing? Uh, I scroll down, you see you have a lot of items on the portfolio, I added some new ones, they're good to cancel positions, and this is mostly junior mining companies that I discovered over the weekend. 
I will not talk to you about them. Here I may mention this to my students a little bit. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's say the, the portfolio that I am having has lots of items. I think I feel like I have too many, but that's just because I'm taking an opportunity of these markets and what's going on. And I sometimes feel like, wow, there is so much opportunity there uh, and uh, some kind of greed comes in and uh, starts getting to me as well. Uh, let's have a look at what's going on daily and since open positions they showing I was a little lost this is mostly due to my insurance which has been running for a long time this one here position on S&P 500 330 is very old position I bought it very very long time ago it was like for one year or half a year position now it's just 53 days left till expiry and it's gonna expire worthless uh, for sure, I don't have much cash stuck in it anymore, like what is this, like 120 bucks more to lose on this, not too much, so I'm just keeping it in case something happens, uh, you know, uh, this will start working for me and I have new position, new insurance, additional one, again, two put contracts, 144 days, 144 days till expiry at 390, market's trading 417 now, so it's a little bit uh, out of the money. And I intended to keep it for uh, you know half a year and see if uh, market does some correction. If it does, this will start working for me. Now it's just losing 164 bucks. Uh, and there is a one uh, position here which is uh, reducing the cost of the insurance. Here, uh, this has just uh, been you know bringing 63 bucks back to my account. So this is the insurance position which is causing this to look so bad. Uh, we have a lot of winners. We have a winner, for example, in gold. It's pretty nice winner, almost 3k. Uh, some losing position, which they look like also on gold and silver. They're really not. We've been looking at that before. Right now, the position is showing a bit of loss. But if you go to account statement, it's not that critical or that big. So profit and losses, AG is actually making 520 bucks year to date and AU 700 bucks, even though it shows the losses. That's because I own the stocks, okay, uh, on both of these and stock value went down compared to what I bought it for, but I've been selling calls and puts for a while on these uh, tickers and that reduced the cost of ownership below the levels of uh, what I'm owning them right now. But of course, the Think of something the platform will calculate this number based on what I bought this for, you know, uh, originally. So that does not take into account my old puts and calls that I sold on these positions. So uh, looks like today we're losing around 1k on this, but overall year to date performance of this portfolio is 26, almost 27k. Okay, so we're about to end April. So four months into the year, making 26k is not too bad. Huh? So uh, I'm, I'm feeling good about this, would like to see maybe 30k would be nicer to see uh, before May, but maybe we'll get there, we'll see. Uh, let's be happy with what we have. Um, 212 bucks per day, Theta. So Theta, for those who don't remember what it is, Theta is our uh, time decay value. So that means that uh, every day, every one day, okay, as the uh, time ticks, which is for sure, you know, every day we have a new day, every day, day, uh, the portfolio, this portfolio will be making 212, to almost 213 dollars, you know, so uh, why is that? Because I've been selling a lot of contracts, put contracts like this one or this one, call contracts, with a positive theta, meaning time value, selling contracts means that I promised someone that I'm gonna, in this case, buy the shares of AG for $14, okay, so it's a promise, and for this promise, these guys were willing to pay me 280 bucks, uh, so it's 28 cents per share, but I need to multiply by 10 contracts, each contract is uh, basically valid for 100 shares, so it's 1,000 shares, promised to buy 1,000 shares at $14, okay, per share, that brings me $280 for this promise uh, when it expires in 25 days. I'm going to keep that currency. And on call, I promised to sell uh, AG at $18. You know, I bought at $17.50. I promised to sell at $18. 25 days from now, somebody was willing to pay me a premium of $480. So altogether, what do I have? $600, $760 worth in promises. Okay, and that creates a positive uh, theta value, which is uh, until the, for the for this 25 days, every day, 
I'll be making $30 uh, out of this position. This value will increase a little bit later as we get closer to the expiry. So uh, 30 days per day is not, uh, not $30 per day is not too bad. Uh, altogether, from all these positions, I'm making 213 a day. So a uh, very cool portfolio, cash flowing portfolio. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's how it looks like. And I'm going to move now to the position which um, I told you guys to discuss with you, uh, YouTubers. Uh, Exxon Mobil, you know, uh, oil. Everybody knows it's an evil corporation, right? Yeah, they dig oil out of the ground, they pollute the world and so on. However, oil became the asset, the energy asset uh, that the world is really dependent on. Yeah, We had some stories with oil during the corona pandemic. And the story was that uh, basically prices of oil dropped to the levels which were negative. So people were paying others to take the oil from them on the futures market. It was crazy. But now what we see is exactly the opposite action. Oil, you know, getting really quickly in value. So you can see ExxonMobil is just a company which digs that out of the ground. Uh, but as the market, you know, moves up and uh, companies like uh, based on, you know, um, uh, other types of assets, let's say gold, silver, or, you know, Clorox producing some stuff, you know, or, or Walmart producing something. Also, I mean, today's, uh, yeah, pretty much down. Oil is going up and up and up and steadily, you know, had some mini correction. Why is that? You remember I've been talking a little bit about the correct uh, the inflation happening these days, okay, and also the falsified uh, digit, you know, which is representing the inflation rate, uh, current inflation rate uh, in the in the economy. So uh, what CPI reports is something around two percent, yeah, inf inflation going on. And uh, but this number is unsustainable. People, you know, go to the streets and they buy, you know, go to the shops and they buy the the things, you know, that they need, and they notice. They simply notice that uh, there is something weird going on. Like, why are the prices going up so crazy, so rapidly? You know, my salary doesn't increase too much, you know, but the prices they go up like crazy. What's going on? You know, even though you know I hear on TV there is no inflation, why are the prices going up? Uh, well, that's because there is inflation and uh, the inflation will be happening and will be going really quickly. Probably, uh, you know, as the government overdoes its QE, you know, the, the more federal reserve, more or less, not government. Uh, when, they, when they overdo this uh, money printing process and bring more currency to the markets, the inflation will go even more rapid, you know, uh, high. And uh, at some point of time, lying with CPI will not be... Uh, possible anymore. So, what I, it's like, it's my personal opinion, what I see will happen to oil very, very soon is the price of oil has to jump because this resource is uh, very important for, uh, you know, production of items, digging stuff off the ground. There are machines working, digging gold out of the ground. There is Oil is needed to in agriculture or to produce, you know, your your bread or whatever, you know, to produce the energy to collect, you know, the grains from the field, uh, you know, to to with the tractors and so on, to do basically anything, transportation, right, to transport the goods from one place to the other. You need oil, okay, and if you keep oil cheap, you know, if you keep oil cheap, it's really difficult for the people representing the country of US and A, uh, it's very cheap uh, to, uh, no, it's very difficult to explain why the prices are rising, you know? Oil is cheap, why would they be rising? You know, we're having inflation, do you guys have it under control? But if you make and manipulate oil to go up in price really strongly, you know, and you say, oil is extremely expensive now because, I don't know, some container ship blocking the, transportation of uh, oil from, I don't know, through through the Red Sea and it cannot get to the country and, you know, we, c we have difficulties of importing this and someone is reducing here the production and the prices of oil just went down naturally. So now, also, because of that, you know, the cost of transportation is higher and because of that, you know, the goods must be also more expensive because oil is more expensive. So it can be an excuse for the government to uh, tell people why the prices are rising and hiding the inflation. The, re the real reason why uh, prices are rising is inflation is overdone, money printing and so on. But 
they will try to hide it uh, in uh, the rising prices of oil. Uh, so, having said that, that's just my private opinion. You know, um, it's just an opinion. Don't be, don't you do your own research. You know, uh, don't suggest yourself with what I'm saying. But uh, if I'm having this assumption, I should be very bullish on on oil, right? So uh, what I'm doing here with Exxon Mobil is I'm quite I'm trying to acquire a little bit position of uh, companies which are producing or getting oil out of the ground or controlling basically the oil uh, because I think as the resource itself is going to go up also these companies will be uh, benefiting from this uh, very very highly and the prices of their shares will naturally go up as well so I have two actually trades here I have a Chevron okay here which I cannot open for some reason uh, which I'm trying to acquire here so that's one one way of making money on this is just through premium. So Chevron is trading right now at 101.94. What I did is I promised to basically buy Chevron at 95 bucks per share. And I'm protecting myself a little bit here with uh, protective put. You know, to if the price of Chevron suddenly drops because we have a market correction or something to 80s, I'm protected with this put. So I have only 5k risk in this. Uh, which you can see here, but if it dropped a little bit below 95 or you know stayed somewhere above 19 uh, be, uh, below 95, I would be acquiring these shares, which would be 1,000 shares of Chevron. Okay, it would cost me quite a bit to acquire this, um, you know, to have those shares in my portfolio. Uh, but it's a leverage account. I should be able to at least get half of that, you know, uh, you know. So I probably reduced this from uh, 10 to 5. But the idea is here to get them at the discount, okay? So uh, right now, somebody paid me for this promise, 420 bucks minus, minus uh, 100 bucks, which I you know, paid for the secured put. So $320 to promise to buy this at the level of 95 while it's trading 101. I'm actually thinking that it's going to move sideways or go up so I can keep the premium. And uh, if it doesn't, I can have the company and I can own this. So this is one way of acquiring an asset at a discount, a discount on this case, $320 less than, uh, you know, you would have to pay for, for this right now. So uh, just a little discount, but it's pretty good. We're already making $120 out of this. Uh, okay, but that's Chevron. That's a story which, uh, you know, I don't necessarily have to have Chevron. I really like ExxonMobil. Why do I Exxon like ExxonMobil? Because it's relatively cheap, 55 bucks per share. And if you look at the chart, okay, I'm going to show you the chart of ExxonMobil. Uh, what you can see here is uh, that they're paying really nice dividends, okay? 87 cents uh, per quarter. So if you add this together, you can get a pretty nice dividend in terms of percentage uh, for the price that you're having here to pay for the shares. And also what we see here is a beautiful movement since uh, basically what do we have March. Uh, no, what is this? Uh, August, November, November, December, between November, December, um, the ExxonMobil started in this beautiful uptrend here and it keeps going and going and going. What I'm expecting here is now it has a little pullback, slow down, but what I'm expecting here is going to continue. It's going to bounce off this 50 day moving average and continue going up, 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 up. Because simply what I'm thinking is that excuse that government needs to make with oil to justify their inflation. You know, they cannot allow oil to be cheap. If oil is not cheap, also ExxonMobil will be trading high. That's my personal opinion. So they pay dividend and also they have potential of moving up. So what I want to do here is I want to actually profit on the shares of this company because they pay the dividend. So I want to have the shares. Uh, uh, okay, so what I did first, I have two trades in here. First trade which I've done is I bought 100 shares immediately uh, and I paid for this 55.71, now it's trading 55.89, okay, not too much difference, but I own the shares, and then I promised to sell them at 57.5, okay, so uh, not too much, two and a half point move, just for this uh, 100 shares, but I keep them, and if they don't get to 57.5, I'm going to be paid a dividend, you know, if over the quarter they don't get there, and just move sideways, I'm going to be paid the dividend, and also I will profit from the uh, 100 bucks that I made out of the uh, premium that has been paid to me for promising of selling this at 57.5. So will be quite a nice profit from those two. So that's one way of pro uh, profiting from this. And I will show you this on an analyzed chart in the moment, how it looks on the risk profile. 
And another thing is I promised to buy at 50. So I was thinking that uh, actually, um, you know, ExxonMobil will correct because it was correcting here. I was thinking that it's going to correct to the levels of 50 here and bounce out of this level. So somewhere in the middle between 50 and uh, 200 day moving average. Probably after earnings, that could happen, you know, so if we have an earnings announcement, maybe this drops. So if it doesn't, okay, it doesn't matter, but if it does, I would love to acquire my uh, 1000 shares of ExxonMobil at this level, okay, because I'm, you know, because you know why, because I already explained why. So, uh, and at that point, I would start selling calls and puts on the uh, shares that I own and just simply cash flow from it and own the shares. So this is for play, a little bit playful trade, uh, speculation on an up movement. This one is a position to acquire stocks at a discount if the price drops to the levels of 50 or below, which is trading right now at 55. I would not only collect, in this case, four, 400 bucks okay, for this promise. I will also collect the shares and then uh, anticipate an upward movement and be ready to uh, get the the dividends, you know, from the shares that I own. So ExxonMobil, there we go. Uh, analyze tab, how does it look like on the Analyze tab? This is my risk chart. A risk profile, if I just zoom in a little bit, you can see we are sitting right now over here, having a positive theta of $24 per day until expiry of this contract, which is 21st of May, May both of them. I own 100 shares, so first trade would be 100 shares. So we're making some currency on this. Uh, okay, with an infinite potential of growth if the price goes up. But until May 21st, I promised to sell these shares at the level of 57.5. If it expires worthless, that's great. If it doesn't, you know, I'm going to be making $288 of profit. Okay, because I collected premium, plus I had to sell the shares uh, at this uh, price level, 57.5. Uh, so this looks really cool. Right now that shows me that I'm making nicely money. And then additional one trade is uh, the cash uh, secured put, which promises to buy 1000 shares of Exxon. And this provides me with $400 of premium. And if the price drops below 50, I'm going to collect the shares. And, uh, you know, the cost of ownership would be somewhere for, for 49.60, probably like 45 if I also take this trade into the account. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm trying to show you guys. So this is the way uh, where you can actually benefit from uh, a company that pays dividends and you want to acquire their stocks at a discount. In this case, you know, I probably sold them way too much out of the money. So not, maybe it's not very likely that it will correct, but I anticipated that, uh, you know, something may happen at the earnings so that they may, we can have a little drop towards here because it has been running very, very hard. Maybe it drops one more time. If it doesn't, I will buy back these puts or something and just uh, sell another contract being closer to the money because I really would like to acquire that company. If I'm very, very bullish after the earnings, let's say if I become very, very bullish, I'm going to be also adding call positions to ExxonMobil. So buying long uh, vertical spreads or just uh, long calls creating uh, uh, maybe risk-free trades on this. But for now, it's just a position to acquire the stock and this is what I wanted to show you. This is how you can make money of this, of the premiums by promising to buy at some certain level. You can bring in nice premium, okay? And you can acquire the stock cheaper than it is trading right now. And also you can be selling calls on the position that you may have already or you just buy right now and thus reduce the cost of ownership and cash flow a little bit. Total cash flow from ExxonMobil is 24 bucks, 23 cents per day, you know, so and this position is only blocking 2,800 bucks of on, on my account. So bringing $24, blocking 2,800, that's pretty cool uh, rate of return. And uh, yeah, that's all guys for you, for the YouTubers. I hope you enjoyed this. I want to also invite you guys to visit my Instagram page and follow. I have some cool uh, infographics here and share some trades with you. So uh, risk charts, risk profiles, and uh, sometimes maybe you can learn something cool uh, about it. Uh, and also I would like to welcome you to the YouTube channel. It's slowly, slowly growing, not too much subscribers. And my uh, Twitter channel, 
I think the profile here is optionmindful.com, optionmindful uh, at optionmindful. I'm getting more followers now. Slowly, 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 I talk about silver. You know, I I share some posts about people that I follow and I find their their posts very interesting. I talk also a little bit about mining business, especially uh, silver, about you know collapse of the dollar and currencies. I share my videos, I mean, share videos that I like, and also my videos and my posts, uh, also some analysis. When I find something very, very interesting, I add it here. And, uh, you know, that's, that's something that you may also uh, find interesting. So welcome, guys. Feel free to join. And I'm going to move now towards the, uh, my, my students. And we're going to talk about the, disposition, the positions in this portfolio. I'm going to analyze two more trades uh with you guys uh so uh let's move on